Hi, this is Di, the Bass Play Mom, and I got something new I wanted to share with you. So this is the Fender commemorative 75th anniversary book. It is big. It, it, it's beefy. It's hardback. And it comes in this case with the Fender tweed on it that's on the Fender amplifiers. Pretty cool. So, And there it is without the case. You can see it's got the tweed here on the edge. And it says Fender 75 years on the front. It has a nice red guitar and a amplifier with the tweed. And so I marked my favorite spot. Here is the book. And it's got a lot of albums on the cover. I remember when people had all those albums. Oh my goodness. All right. Got that nice Fiesta red. And then the Fender logo. And then it's going to talk about guitars a lot. <laughs> so I marked the bases. Here we go. Here is the introduction of the precision bass. See the drawings? Isn't that cool? It had that headstock that the precision basses had. This quote, I like this. Leo and I had a discussion about the new bass, and he's telling me how precise it was how you could fret it right down to a hundredth of an inch. Now, who puts their fingers a hundredth of an inch this way or that way on a bass string? But he was so possessed with the fact that this was the first time that the fret layout of the bass was so precise. He said to me, you know, it's so precise, we ought to call it the precision bass. Well, why not? So it became the Fender Precision Bass. And there's a good look at the solid body on that. Original Fender Precision Bass style. So this is about shaking up the low end. So this is the uh, how the Precision Bass affected music. Here's some ladies playing them in the uh, factory. So the amplifier for the bass that most people used was what they called a TV front amp. See, it had this edge around it. They have this edge. That's a TV front amp. See, this is what people were using. And the amp they used for bass was 1 by 15. So that's one speaker 15 inches around. So you can imagine how many people blew out. Because that is not quite the level of amplification one needs for bass. That's fine for guitar. Not so good for bass. And then the amplifier got bigger. It says Roaring Deluxe to 4 by 10 bass man. So the bass man amp was 4 by 10. So that means four speakers that were 10 inches each. So that could carry the sound of the bass a little bit better. Stop blowing out speakers. The 1955 Precision Bass featuring a low design changes, most notably a contoured body and a split design pickup. And then the Jazz Bass was born. Oh, there's Bob Dylan playing a Fender jazz bass. So in 1960, it has a rounder neck shape, so it's easy to play on jazz tunes. That's the jazz bass. And the precision in jazz bass, this was 1960. To this day, they're still the standard by which other basses are measured. And then, all right, you've got to love this page, okay? First, it starts with Verding White from Earth, Wind, and Fire. I saw him at NAMM 2020. There is a video. I will link it here so you can watch Verding play at NAMM 2020. I saw him right before quarantine. It was pretty amazing. It was a surprise show, too, so we were all very happy. I mean, we knew there was a show. We didn't know who was playing. And then Jocko, of course, Getty Lee, and Flea. All playing Fenders, some of my favorite bass players, are all on this page. It's pretty cool. Then the bass student models start coming out. They show one of the Mustang basses, which I have too. They show a Mustang bass, and this one is in Fiesta Red. I do love a good Fiesta Red bass. I don't have one, but I do love that color, and I like that pick guard too. And one more page I'm going to show you out of the book. Did you know there was a Paisley bass? There's Paisley guitars, but that is a Paisley bass. I'm going to get it where you can really see it. Look at that. Thanks. 
Brad Paisley. <laughs> now there are a few more bases in here, but I'm going to leave them for you to discover when you go through the book. And there is also a little bit of talk at the end about the future and what's going to happen at Fender and what they're working on. So it's a good history book, but it also has a little bit of forecasting in it. And that is the Fender 75 Years book. Do you like it? Would you get it? Do you think as a bass player that it has enough bass coverage? It's an enjoyable read and a lovely coffee table book. Let me know what you think below. Do you like the bases they chose to show in the book? Do you think they should have shown more? Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. Click here to watch another YouTube video where I discuss, well, this one, it's the Getty Lee book of bass, the big book of bass. You gotta check that one out. And then, oh, and down here is a video that YouTube picked out just for you.